It is time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're about to embark on the, uh, the, the into the field of ecology with our whole careers leg of the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. That was going to consist of this game, Wildlife, um, which would have been like a classic roll and move game within a classic roll and move game, since we're doing this all within the context of careers. Um, however, I was I took a Occasionally I do this, I'll just take a break and I'll just play a game without videotaping it or anything, just kind of randomly, without um, any future end result in mind. A lot of my gameplays are to review something or to do it to, to get it down so I can teach people. Or, you know, this was just, I just picked up a game and learned it and played it. And it turns out this would be a pretty fitting game for this leg or this section of the tournament. Um, and it fits the player count, which is kind of too bad because I'd like to play it with fewer than the maximum. But maximum player count for this game, CO2 is five, and we have five players. Um, game's kind of heavy right now, and I'll show you why. And this is this is kind of a tip for those of you who travel with games. Um, this game has so much box space when you take out the insert that you can. Let's count how many other smaller games I can fit in here, because this is all I took to my board game afternoon yesterday. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Normally I would just take like those six card games, um, in my backpack because I go to something after board game afternoon. I don't want to, so I'm kind of out and about with my backpack for several hours. Um, and I don't want to carry a bunch of stuff. But it all fits in the CO2 box, um, including this bag that I added from the game Rush Hour. So we're going to play CO2, which I can't figure out if it's a, if it's a optimistic or a pessimistic game. So maybe you could think about this. Uh, the main idea, um, the main storyline is the players are all running green power companies, or the, the companies kind of run the players in a way because they, they give you a, a goal that you're trying to meet. And um, you're trying to stop the CO2 level rising to a certain point. Um, it's positive because it's easy to do that. There is this kind of like very weak sauce cooperative element where if the CO2 level gets too high, everyone loses that that's really hard to have that happen if you're trying. I think the only thing that would prevent you, like that, 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 that threat prevents you from doing is just not proposing projects. You, you'll understand what that means, or I guess, when I show you a little bit of the game. Or maybe you already know the game, and then you already understand what that means. But So there's that. It's easy to do. The pessimistic thing, maybe, about the game, and the game has a subject matter. It kind of ties better with its subject matter than other games of its ilk but it doesn't really portray it realistically either, so we'll have that big caveat and put that out of the way. This is still a view, it's portraying something. Um, pessimistic thing is all the companies are really working hard on this starting in the 1970s, and all the nations and the, all the regions of the world is kind of like their number one priority in terms of power. Um, but yeah, well, the number two priority. Number two, one priority is to power everything. Okay, Number two priority is if it's green power, great, they'll, they'll do that. Um, so, I don't know if that's positive or negative, I think it's maybe more of a negative view, well, I don't know, I don't know. So let's, let's look at the game and then get started playing CO2. Sorry, we're not going to get into the game yet, I just wanted to uh, tell you something that is not that interesting to you, but it's interesting to me, and I want to share. Um, so when I played this solitaire, I just grabbed some real people from this kind of increasingly um, chaotic pile uh, of people. I'm not realizing that I was going to use this in the real people, this game, CO2, in the real people multi-game solitary mag tournament. It turns out three of these five actually were in that playthrough. Um, none of them won. One of them got second place, and I think the other two got fourth and fifth place, respectively. Um, so that's a little fun fact for you. Voila! We are set up and ready to go. So first, let's look at um, our people, 
are real payable and what colors they have. Now, um, how I chose this is three of them got the colors that they used last time I played with them this game so that I wouldn't be confused. Um, one of those people had their color based on their name. Uh, one of the people who didn't play last time also had their color based on their name. And so then that left one, one other person who just kind of got the remaining color, even though it's not the color this person usually plays as. Uh, so there we go. Um, let's take a look at our board here. So we have regions of the world. They all want clean energy. Um, they all have started out with some dirty energy and they have, um, you can see how their population is gonna grow in the future and thus their energy needs are gonna uh, grow in the future. Now, you, it makes sense that Asia would have the greatest number of slots going into the future, right? Because they're going to have the most population um, if things trend as they're trending right now. Oddly, Africa's population isn't going to grow very much. Unlike North America, which the population is going to keep growing a lot, in Europe, the population is going to grow a lot. I don't, I'm not big uh, sociologist. I don't know a lot about population trends, but it seems to me like this is an error, a factual error in the game. I don't think Europe and North America have vastly expanding populations um, compared to Africa. Um, in Australia, I don't, I don't think they're going to be growing that much, uh, but I guess maybe New Zealand is. All right, so here we, uh, sorry, I went on a tangent there. Um, I'm not sorry. Each region has its own carbon emissions permits. That's one of the kind of resources in the game. If you control the region, you can use their carbon emissions permits. Um, this is a simpler world, so permits are just purple disks. Um, you see here how there's a number. Sorry about the glare. That number there is how much parts per million carbon is going in the air. So this is a coal plant. This is an oil plant. This is a natural gas plant. And so all of those add to this guy here, and that's the carbon parts per million in the Earth's atmosphere. If this crosses over this marker um, during the kind of bookkeeping phase of the game, uh, bad events are going to start to happen. The events are not actually that bad, but they do affect the game. They're just kind of a game mechanism as opposed to some calamity that... Um, but really, it just makes people lose these white cubes, which is a resource you use primarily to build power plants here. All right, so those are our regions. Above our region, you'll see there's project spaces. On a turn, players are going to have one. They're going to be able to do one of three major actions, and they have to do one of three major actions. Um, the first major action is putting something on one of these spaces. Okay, so we have five major types of power plant or carbon offsets in the in the case of this forest here. Um, there's also five different types of projects. Each of these corresponds to one of these. So if you propose a project, you take one of these face down, you put it on one of these slots. Each of the regions has the same three slots. And depending on where you put it, you get some, it, some benefit, either money, and the money's based on how many carbon emissions permits are there, uh, two white cubes, which is based on the number two, um, or scientist. Now, players have these scientists here. They start with one. If you place something on the scientist thing, you can either get a new one of your color from the bank, or you can move one. Um, and sometimes it's uh, nice to be able to move another one, because normally you only get to move a scientist once per turn. You also have three minor actions you can do, and you can do each of these once. So sometimes you might want to propose just to be able to move another one of your scientists in order to do some stuff. So um, that's the first major action. If, you've, if there's already a proposed thing out there, someone else already proposed a plan, a project, you can install it and flip it over. And that's what the stuff on the other side of the project means. That's the bonus you get for installing a project. And that can be someone else's. People don't own projects. They just kind of go out there. You can propose a project. Someone else can install it. Um, if a project's installed, then someone can build a power plant, um, which would go here if they were to do that, or a carbon offset in the case of this forest. Um, so there you have it, and someone else can do that. Now, you can get kind of a partial ownership or borrowship of a thing by putting your scientists on it. 
in that case, um, someone would pay you to move your scientists and then you get a expertise bonus. And what's expertise, you're wondering, well expertise is these little tracks here. Expertise does a lot of different things. Expertise gives you money potentially or points but, uh, definitely. Um, expertise also is necessary to build things later on. You don't have to build these things to win the game but they do supply you a hefty chunk of points like this forest here if you build a forest. It's funny, my, my son was talking to me about building a forest today because um, some people are planning on tearing down a forest and he said, well, can't they just build it again afterwards? Um, and I tried to explain it to him. But um, I'm on another tangent. So you can build these, you'd have to have expertise equal to the number of white cubes. You also have to pay those white cubes and the money and then you can do that. Um, so those are kind of the major things. The minor things you do on your turn are um, moving scientists around. And basically, you're usually going to be moving scientists to projects. As long as there's not a scientist there, you can move a scientist to a project. If you already have a scientist on a particular type of technology, you can move a scientist up to the center ring somewhere that matches that symbol. So if, you were, if Dick had a scientist here, he could move it to Madrid, and he'd be at this summit. Now there he's waiting for someone else to show up at that summit so he can tell them about the glories of cold fusion. And once someone else goes there, then the Madrid summit is over. He gets his scientist back, and then he gets an expertise of that. And he could also choose to get one in solar or that. So you get, you get two expertise whenever a summit's finished. And that's another way to get expertise. Uh, expertise can also give you expertise. Like if you're going on this recycling expertise and you hit this, then you get expertise in this. Um, yeah. Also, at the end of your turn, you can pick one, one project where you have a scientist and get expertise in that sort of area. So that's moving scientists around. Um, you can also do stuff with cards. I haven't put the cards out yet, so I lied when I said I had everything set up. But basically, everyone gets five cards that ha give them special benefits. There's also like group goal cards that if someone can use their card action to meet that goal or they can play a card from their hand. Um, you're not, not going to use that every turn. There's also this market in the middle, carbon emissions permits you can buy. Uh, the, the price is indicated by this red disc. It goes from one to eight. Um, if all of that, whenever someone gets a carbon emissions permit, it comes out of this market. If the market depletes, then the price goes up and you refill it from the bank, which is hidden over here. See that? That's nifty. If someone sells to the market, then they put it here and then the price goes back down. Um, other than that, if you ever have to use a carbon emissions permit, like if the main, well, I think the only reason, well, no, no, the main reason you're going to use that is if you're installing a project, which means you flip it over, you have to use a carbon emissions permit to do that. Uh, I guess because it takes, you, you, you emit stuff when you do that, but you don't emit stuff when you build a power plant. I don't understand that. I think it's just a gamey thing give you some use for the carbon emissions permits. Money is uh, is point heavy in this game. It's um, $2 per point at the end of the game. So just getting a lot of money can be a great way to get points. Unlike other games like this where it could be like four to one or three to one or not count at all. Uh, money is, is, a, is valuable point wise. And that's pretty much it. There's an interface, which I guess I'll just get into when we go to it. Um, and that's a little fiddly rules, but not fiddly, I don't want to use that word, but there's some smaller rules, but that's a good overview. You'll kind of get an idea of what's going on. You're trying to get points to win. Let's do it. The players all have these secret goal cards. Um, we can see them. It's just easier for me to, to see them rather than do this. Four of them were in the earlier solitaire game I played with three of these players already. Two of those cards are held by two of those players, and one of those cards is brand new to me. It wasn't even in the game that I played opposed. Um, so basically what these mean, this one gives you points if you lead in expertise. That's what Pegasus is going to be going for. It's great to get a lot of expertise in this game regardless. They're worth points. They let you do things. They give you all sorts of bonuses. This, this little part, although it's not in the middle of the board, is pretty important. Um, I would say probably more important than the market. Um, this one, I can't remember what it does. This one, I think, 
if you have factories in different places. Oh yeah, this one gives you points for having control of areas. So if you have like, I don't understand why you would control these areas by building a power plant there, but maybe you have enough energy lobbying going on that you control. You get to put a disc there if you have the most factories built there. If you're tied, then you go up the um, this this little thing here. So these are the three, oh, I didn't mention this. These things are the three types of energy that this region will accept because they're very picky and everyone is equally picky in this world, this very equal world. Um, so expertise, factories in different regions, um, they all have a maximum point value too. So this one, she can get 15 off that by the end of the game. This one is, I think, factories after the first. And this is the number of these you have on hand, which is kind of a weird one, but um, I like what it does to the dynamic of the game because um, someone's just going to be hoarding those. That's the, probably the easiest one to figure out that someone's going for because otherwise, why are you have a bunch of those? Unless if you're good at manipulating the market, I guess you can get a lot of money by having a lot of those. But you get these by having control too. So if you have control of an area, you not only can spend them from that, that region, um, you also get whatever they have left at the end of the game. So, I don't know. All right, let's start with Dick, and we'll just look at what he's going to do on his turn, maybe with a little more detail than we normally do. This is the first turn, which there's fewer options in the first turn because you really only have one action option, and that is to propose um, a power plant. But Dick's going to go ahead and do that. Now, looking at his secret goal, he wants control. Looking at this thing, since they give precedence to the things that are higher up, Forests and solar are going to be what he's looking for the most. Um, there's three areas that prefer forests over everything else, two areas that prefer solar, and then Oceania uh, prefers um, cold fusion. So Dick kind of knows in his mind that he wants to be building those two things. Solar would be a lot easier for him to build early on. So he's maybe going to focus on doing that first. He also happens to have a card. I didn't talk about these cards, but I'll talk about them now. Um, during the card play, you can either play one of these cards as your minor card play action, or you can claim one of these. These are like part of the schizophrenic UN goal, where the UN will give you points for building, having built some combination of um, power plants. But, you know, if you add all of these up, they want you to build every kind of power plant. So I don't, I don't understand why that uh, it's best not to think about it. So this card's in two parts. There's this bigger part and the little part. The little part you can always do to get that, whatever it says. So you could just play this card and get $2. Bigger part, if you um, do this, which means go to a summit, a solar summit, then you get another solar expertise. Now since Dick would like solar expertise, that's a good thing for him to do starting off. So what he's going to do is he's going to take one of these solar projects and he's going to place it in a place that prefers solar, which shouldn't be too hard. And he could either, he's probably going to want to do it to get, he starts out with less money since he's the first player. He's going to be shooting to get $10 so that he can have the most there. He's also going to need some white cubes. Um, having another scientist would help get the because he's going to have to start getting his expertise up if he wants to build these forests they need to be three so dick is going to dick likes to get scientists to start out with so he is going to put this on the scientist right there and yeah i think he likes it there and then he's going to go ahead and put his own scientists on there um now he gets a new scientist that's going to go to his pocket here, and then he's going to get to put a disc on the first space of solar because he's ending his turn with that right there. He's not going to play any cards or do anything else. Um, he's just getting a scientist, and that's the end of Dick's turn. So here we have Pegasus. She wants to be leader in expertise, so she's really got to focus on this track a lot. Now these these bonus cards aren't necessary to win the game, but they give you. I find they help give you some guidance as do these UN cards, and I think that's kind of part of their point. They they kind of point you in a direction. So she wants a lot of expertise. She wants to be the leader. Um, she's seen Dick's already in solar, so she could try to compete there, but probably better to go elsewhere. And she has two cards that relate to recycling. Um, so working with recycling. She can get an additional benefit by doing that. Excuse me. Um, so I think she would like to 
So she has two choices right now. She could pay Dick to move his person back, okay, in order to install this right here. That would be nice, it would give her three cubes, but she wants to do something with recycling, as I already said. So she's gonna take this recycling thing, she's gonna look at where she can place a recycling thing, which is either here, 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 or here. Um, recycling is kind of the cheapest of the lot. You see there's this kind of hierarchy here. Uh, she's gonna go for the two white cubes because she's gonna want to eventually be building a recycling thing and she's gonna need two white cubes to do that. And she will go ahead and build it here in Asia, thinking about the group. Um, oh, what's gonna happen when we get to, so everyone's gonna get two turns and we're gonna go to the next phase or the, the next decade. What's gonna happen at the start of the decade is we're gonna draw from this rush hour bag um, new dirty power plants for every region that doesn't have a power plant in the second spot, okay? So, um, and then if, yeah, I, I'll go into that later. So that's what she's doing. She's gonna get her two white cubes and she's gonna go up on the recycling track. This symbol here is like the minimum you would need to build the easiest to build power plant there. It's not that useful a symbol. Okay, it's banana. Her, her, um, Special goal is very similar to Little Red's, but we'll talk about, well, they both just mean they want to build a lot of different factories. So they're going to go be going for cheap stuff uh, to start off with. Kind of similar to Pegasus right now, because Pegasus just happens to be going recycling. But they're also going to be going, well, she's also going to be going recycling. Now, she's got um, this card here that lets her build, that gives her three bucks if she, she installs a, or if she proposes a project in North America. So she's going to go ahead and do that and she's gonna pick the cubes, and that's gonna put her in a place where she will be ready to build as soon as her expertise gets up. Um, now she thought about maybe building here and getting five bucks from Asia, which is nice, um, but she went here because she wants them to be spread out. She wants projects everywhere so that she can build and get a spot, you know, get a foothold everywhere. Um, so she's doing that, and there she did that. She did. So Little Red, his secret thing is he scores for each factory beyond the first. So he just wants to score a lot. He's not going to go with recycling, though. He is going to go with um, biofuel, partially, mainly because of his cards. His, he's got his cards that have a lot of biofuel. And then he doesn't have to compete with um, Pegasus and Banana for dominance. If you, you, you get income based on being first or second place on, on these different tracks. So he's going to go ahead and use this card which gives him a free white cube if he um, proposes a project on this space. And he's gonna go ahead and do that here, propose a project right here in Asia, and that's gonna give him $5 and a cube, which is gonna put him very close to being able to build this thing, um, if it ever comes up. That's the downside of him going with a different energy type, though. Oh, he can't put it in Asia. Never mind. He's going to do it in North America. And she wasn't supposed to do that there. See, this is something you can forget to do. She'll go ahead and do it in Oceania. Or did she score a card there off of North America? She did. I think she has one for another country. So I'll, I'll go back and fix that. Yeah, she has the same card for Oceania. So it's, it's the same thing. Um, sorry about that error there. So I think I started to say the downside of uh, Little Red going with biofuel instead of recycling is that there's fewer biofuel plants out there. So he's essentially working alone at this point. And a, and a lot of people are essentially working alone at this point. Everyone's just proposing projects. And I found this in the other games I played of this. At the start of the game, people tend to just propose a lot of projects because they just feel safer that way. They don't want to leave a, a project installed thinking someone else will construct. There's a lot of fear of doing that. Um, so there's some, I think that's why there's the, the potential danger of doom in the game, because eventually players can't just propose projects. They're gonna have to start installing power plants or everyone loses. Um, there's also a rule where you have to take an action. I think that um, kind of also deals with that trepidation of being the first person to stick your neck out. Right, it's Destructo's turn. He wants to have a lot of these in his hand. He can score up to 16 points by having these. It's two per. Uh, he's going to do something a little um, 
counterintuitive though, and he's going to use his market free action. He can do one thing with the market and he's going to sell one here in order to drop the price. He gets the three bucks, drops the price down. Then he's going to take his scientist because he's going to install a project, yet another installed project, and he is going to install a forest and he can either do it Where does he want to put it? He can put it in South America. Or hmm. I think he might he might be going for money. I think he's gonna install a forest in Asia here. And he's gonna take five dollars off of that. So Destructo's got a bunch of money. Um, and that's that's what I have to say about that. We just saw a rash of installations with our first four players all kind of prompted by their cards and their goals to install their very own projects. Not a lot of working together at all, you, um, which kind of makes sense early game. People start to kind of do things more with their other stuff as things go on. So we saw installation, 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 installation. Um, a lot of these installations allowed people to, to draw from the market, so the market went back up, much to Destructo's chagrin. He was hoping it would he would keep being able to drop it down and then buy a lot uh, a lot more cheaply from here but that did not happen that didn't prevent destructo from selling again he doesn't have any cps now but he has some plans on how to get them um, but they're not very good plans because he needs a cp in order to get them but he's hoping the market price will go down even further uh not very likely right now i don't know but we've gone through both these so now we're going to advance um, to the next decade and we can look at what that what that entails and then we'll, we'll be done for now. So first we do income. Income you look at the first and second on each track and those people get it. Now if you look here we have only have a first place on all the track. If you tie you don't share you just both get it. So we'll start with that recycling track uh, Pegasus and Banana. Both happen to be female elderly women both like recycling. Um, let's go to biofuel. That's going to be two dollars for Little Red and then one dollar for Destructo for his forestry work and one dollar for Dick for his solar work. Then we um, are going to go ahead and draw from our bag here for all of the places, all the areas. No one built a power plant so everything People still want power, so they're all going to get dirty power. Starting with Asia here, they have to pay a CEP. And this is going to go up two. See how this works. And then we're going to go to Oceania. Uh, just CEP, carbon emissions permit, go up four, one, two, three, four. And it's just going up and up. Ooh, another one there for North America. Like our coal here in North America. That's true. One, two, three, four. And pick up our, our shower bag. Ooh, more coal. This is going to be a deadly game. South America. One, two, three, four. Man, we're already going to have some catastrophes. That hasn't happened to me before this early in the game. Another coal. This could end with everyone losing. One, two, three, four. What would that mean for careers? they got to start working together now. Oh my gosh, yet another one. One, two, three, four. Already at 410 parts per million. They are in big trouble. That was bad. Wow. Okay, so here I made a change in the game. Normally, there you can see where the catastrophe is coming, and you can see where the next catastrophe coming is coming a decade ahead. I'm having it so it's just a random catastrophe. I think probably be acceptable if just one was face up, but we're just going to have totally random, and that is Europe. So what that would mean is anyone who did not have a, a factory built in Europe would have to pay a white cube. Um, obviously, no one has a factory built in white in uh, in white Europe, and so they're all going to have to pay a white cube. Now, the nice thing about these white cubes is these white cubes are available to be used in Europe. Destructo has no white cubes, so he's going to lose two points. One, two. You're not supposed to use this as a track, but I 
as a point track, but I do it anyway. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Our people are in danger. Our planet is in danger. Won't you do something to help? Please. Thank you.